Hey, Successors, before we get into the show today, I'd like to tell you about my new book, Indulge Your Affirmative Motivation Within, 25 Motivations of Personal Development and Life Success. If you're struggling to stay motivated or just need a little boost, check out the ways that I've stayed motivated over the last few years. Go ahead and go over to Amazon.com and grab yourself a copy. That's Indulge Your Affirmative Motivation Within, 25 Motivations of Personal Development and Life Success. Get it now. On with the show. Success. Media. Network. Network. Network, 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 network. This is your show. Good day, successors. I'm Antonio Holman, and welcome to the Four Principles of Success, number 57, where I chat with successful people and entrepreneurs about how they enhance their businesses and lives in the areas of knowledge, health, wealth, and spirituality. And if you want to learn how I've stayed motivated throughout the years, check out my new book, Indulge Your Affirmative Motivation Within, 25 Motivations of Personal Development and Life Success, now on Amazon. Today we're talking to Kathy Groover, PhD. Kathy is located in Santa Barbara, California, is a TEDx speaker, award-winning author, stress expert, health practitioner, actress, massage therapist, and trapeze artist who hosts a national TV show based on her first book, The Alternative Medicine Cabinet, which won a Beverly Hills Book Award. Kathy's other authored efforts are as follows. Conquer Your Stress at Work, Workplace Wellness, Body-Mind Therapies for the Body Worker, Conquer Your Stress with Mind-Body Techniques, and Journey of Healing. With Kathy's experiences and expertise, she hopes to inspire and give us a few clues on how to ease life stress. Kathy, are you ready to help our listeners prepare for success? I am so ready. All right. You got a heck of a resume there, lady. <laughs> uh, and so when people read that stuff, I go, oh, my God. Oh, wow. That's no wonder I'm so busy. <laughs> when I was putting this together, my head was spinning. <laughs> All right, Kathy. So aside from your uh, busy business world, tell us a little bit about your personal life. Yeah. You know, I, you mentioned I do flying trapeze. It's one of my most favorite things to do. I also do, I, I'm a dancer. I started dancing when I was about five and I have not stopped. So I do hip hop dance every couple, every so many days, uh, which is a blast. Um, I love learning. So I'm actually in a hypnosis course right now and I'm a motivational speaker. So I'm heading around the world to, to help people, uh, learn to, to help them change their mind a little bit. I love travel. It's one of my most favorite things. So reading your bio, of course, the thing that caught my attention the most, you, 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 aside from having done a myriad of things, but uh, being a flying trapeze artist, how'd you get into that? And where does, where does being an actress fit into this whole life equation also? Yeah, you know, the actress thing has translated into some amazing opportunities that I didn't think would. Um, I started acting when I was in about fifth grade, and that's what I was going to do. So I set up my high school, I set up my college, everything so that I could be a performer. And when I moved to Los Angeles from Pittsburgh, I'm an East Coast girl. Uh, we were just talking about weather off off the air there. Uh, East Coast girl, um, I went to California to pursue that acting career, and when I realized that wasn't going to work, I fell back on the other thing that I always did, which was healing and massage. So those those two items sort of ran parallel for many, many years, and little did I know the acting would come back to pass with all the motivational speaking and doing and all the podcasts and the radio shows and the TV show and hosting my own show. I knew I'd host my own show at some point. I thought it would be some wacky sitcom. I didn't know it would be you know, a nonfiction show on health. So that all came full circle, which was really exciting. Uh, But the trapeze, yeah, I'm an adventure seeker. My mom always go for it. And to me, I don't really believe in a bucket list. To me, a bucket list is what you write down, then you throw in a drawer and don't look at for three years. You go do the things that you can do. You reach for that now. Now, the trip around the world, I have to wait till I have a little more time and a little more money. But um, some things that I wanted to do, I went and did them. And trapeze was one. And I thought it would be this. So you do it once and you check it off and you're done. No, I loved it. So I've been flying for about four years. I've done close to 100 classes I for a show in Seattle, and I'm absolutely obsessed. I love it. For those who may not know, tell us a little bit more about your book, The Alternative Medicine Cabinet, and the TV show based off of it. Yeah, The Alternative Medicine Cabinet was my first book, and I wrote that because I I had started writing articles, and I started contributing to other people's pieces, and I realized, you know, I really want more people to know what I'm doing. So I gathered everything I had written. I gathered blog posts, I gathered articles and projects for school, and uh, put it all together, which is 
one of the reasons I called it alternative medicine cabinet because truly you open it up and you can grab various things out of it. Every chapter is really a standalone piece of information. Uh, and so it covers everything from your herbs and homeopathics to healthy pregnancy to communicating with your massage therapist. Since that was my background, that was there's a big part of it in there. And I talk a little bit about mind body medicine, but it wasn't a thing for me yet. You know, like I knew a little bit about it, but not tons. Uh, and so when I I had the privilege of doing a show for Lifetime Television, and one of my old actor buddies says, hey, you know what you should do? You should have your own TV show, and you should call it the Alternative Medicine Cabinet. And I said, (laughs) what do you think I'm reaching for? And um, sort of just threw it out to the universe. Hey, I want my own show, and this is what it's going to be called, and this is what I'm going to do. And, you know, various people... (laughs) <laughs> you know, these things unfold in a way that you never know. You just follow the breadcrumbs and things happen exactly the way they're supposed to. An old, different old actor friend of mine said, hey, don't you have a show? And I said, yeah, I do. And he goes, I want to pitch your show. And I'm thinking, why? Because I know this guy. He only does things if it's good for him. So I'm thinking, what's in this for you? <laughs> and he's like, I'll make money off your expertise. And I'm like, all right. So we ended up pitching the show to this network, and they loved it. And one of the reasons they loved it was because of my acting background. Uh, because I wasn't just a PhD who was going to stand in front of the camera and go, blah, 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 stress is bad. You know, I actually had personality, and I could be funny and fun. And, um, and so we ended up shooting 50 segments for the show. Oh, we're still in post-production. I actually messaged the guy this morning and went, hello, how's it going? Um, So I don't know when it's going to be on the air, but we're closer. Every day we're inching closer and closer. Uh, So I'm really optimistic that soon, (laughs) very soon, it'll be on the airwaves everywhere. Uh, But it was an amazing experience. It was an amazing experience. What is it about stress that uh, that makes such an impact on the human body? Um, I know when it comes to stress, There is definitely a connection. And um, what do you feel are the three primary steps that people can take to lessen those stresses? Yeah, absolutely. The first thing to know, the first thing to remember, and this is so, so important, stress is not the problem uh, because we can't control the stress. We can't control any of those external things. We can't control the traffic. We can't control the internet connection pooped out right when we're supposed to be doing something important. We can't control the government. We can't control any of these things. And as soon as we realize that that's out of our control and that all we can control are our thoughts about it, how we respond, we're going to be so much better off. Uh, The other thing I think we have to do is just unplug every once in a while. You know, we are so connected with social media, which is great. I'm so happy that I can keep in touch with people I've not seen since high school or grade school. But With that type of immediate connectivity, we're not just dealing with our own stress and our own neighborhood stress. We're dealing with world stress, and we're hearing about things and seeing images and videos and pictures of tragedies that, you know, even 15 years ago, it would have been, hey, maybe there would have been a glimpse on the nighttime news. That was it. Uh, So remembering stress isn't the problem, unplugging. And then going a little further with that unplugging is actually having some quiet space. Uh, You know, it used to be if we were standing in line at the post office or standing in line at the bank or waiting for something, we had to be sort of either quiet with ourselves or we'd talk to people around us. And now what's the first thing we do? You see every head go down. They're looking at the phone. Oh, a cat video. Oh, what's happening on Facebook? Oh, I got a tweet. You know, it's become this obsessive mm, instant gratification thing of when that little thing dings, oh, what was that? Oh, it might be good. Maybe that's what I was waiting for. And it's a distraction to us. And if we don't have that quiet space to know ourselves, to go inside, we're not going to know our health. We're not going to know how we're feeling. We're not going to know how our bodies are doing. I think it's really important to take that quiet space to know ourselves, whether it's meditation, mindfulness, or just just being quiet for five minutes. It's, It's so beneficial to us. So you were a TEDx speaker, and I'm very curious about what that process was like and how did you even become a TEDx speaker in the first place? Yeah, you know, it was, again, following the breadcrumbs. Uh, I realized about a year ago that I really, really wanted to pursue speaking as a profession. Uh, I still do massage mainly as my my vocation during the day, and I've been doing massage for about 28 years, and at some point my body's going to go, no, 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 and it's not going to let me do 28 hours of massage a week. I, I also do hypnosis. That's maybe 10 or 15% of my practice, but massage is really physical, so 
I threw it out there. I'm like, look, I really want to do more speaking. I want to make it a profession. I want to get paid well. And I kind of looked at, okay, well, what do I need to do to be a professional speaker? I need to join the National Speakers Association. Great. I set things in motion. I was able to meet the requirements, which are kind of stringent, and I was able to join about a year ago. I also said, hmm got to do a TED Talk, got to do a TEDx Talk. So I started looking online, and as amazing as the organization is, the the website's not easy to manage if you want to do a talk. You have to find each individual organizer, and sometimes they're listed where the talk is, sometimes they're not. They have different themes that oftentimes don't apply because I'm not a researcher, I'm not doing that kind of stuff. And I found one that was going to be in Salinas. And I con- you know, contacted the organizer and I said, hey, you know, I see you're doing this, this TEDx in Salinas. And she was didn't have a theme, so I could talk about whatever I wanted. And I contacted this woman and said, hey, you know, I'm really interested in being one of your speakers. Can I submit a proposal? She wrote back immediately and said, yeah, get it in. I'm like, okay. So I submit the proposal to do specifically on flying trapeze. Because I thought that's kind of different. I look at it as a mindfulness practice. I thought it would make a neat TEDx talk. And we ended up talking. I was at a conference in in Boston. I go to Harvard every year or two and, and learn more mind-body stuff. And I'm in my little bed and breakfast, and I'm talking to her on the phone. And we had so much in common. We're both only children. Uh, we both love speaking. We're talking about animals. And she was just in a car accident, had to get a new car. And my car just died. So we had like all these great synergistic things. And about a week and a half, two weeks later, she emailed me and said, I'd love to have you speak, but you have to change the topic. And I went, ah, okay. And so a couple months later in February, I found myself up in Salinas, which is in Northern California, doing this awesome TEDx. It was a great experience. The other people that were there, there was this great camaraderie amongst all the speakers, and it was really neat. And and it was fun to do something live in front of the community and educate them and, and interact with them, because that's really the point of what TEDx is. It's about sharing knowledge. Uh, but then also to have it online is really cool. I've got well over 60,000 views which I know in the grand scheme of the internet isn't huge because it's like, I got a million on my cat video. Uh, but for a little <laughs> TEDx in you know Salinas, California, it was the first year they did it. And you know my topic was, a, I had, uh, I told three stories with three different lessons of three little words each. So it was talking about going for it, talking about staying in the present moment and things like that. And it was great. It was very well received. I got the laughs I wanted, which is, is important to me. And it was, it was wonderful. And it's, it is one of those things of if you want to be a professional speaker, that helps. It doesn't launch your career per se, but it really helps to have that under your belt. What is it about you that makes you feel that you want to focus your life on inspiring others to to, to aim to be better and have overall wellness. What is that personal connection about you? Mm, yeah, I lost my mom when I was young. She died when I was 18. And I watched her struggle through about nine years of cancer. And it wasn't, you know, people say, oh, well, of course you want to be in healthcare because of that. It wasn't as clear as that A plus B equals C thing. It was a combination. It was knowing that she didn't really have any options because this was Pittsburgh in the 80s and you got surgery, chemo, radiation. Period. That was pretty much it. There was no acupuncture. There was no meditation. There was no hypnosis. There was no, you know, anything that I would now turn my clients on to to help them. Even through things like the side effects of chemo, there wasn't anything like that for her then. Uh, so that was part of it. I want people to know they have options. Options in how we eat, options in what practitioners you use, options in what you think about, how you think about things. Uh, and then also my dad was such an amazing caregiver. You know, he was practically a nurse by the time she passed away. He was changing IVs and dealing with bed sores and helping with, you know, bowel issues. And he he was just an angel, um, still is. So that was really inspiring to me. And I don't know, I just, I feel like I shot out of the womb uh, being good at massage. And it was something I denied for the longest time. I'm like, no, I'm an actor. And it's like, well, apparently you can kind of be everything. Uh, At least it worked for me. So I think that's what it is. I think through, you know, living with that experience that can't help but change you. And now I want to let people know that they have options, that they have other ways to, to deal with things and think about things. As we know, life's full of ups and downs, and I'm not sure if your previous answer is re- related to what I'm about to ask you, but throughout your journey, what was the time you felt most unsuccessful in your life? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the previous answer, eh, you know, my mom, I was a kid. I didn't know. There was no way for me to feel success or failure with that. But it's interesting. When I made the switch, when I decided I was leaving Los Angeles, I at the time was working in a production company. 
We did these awesome documentary films. It was a cool job, but I was really tired of being in Los Angeles because it's tough to be there as an actor and not be pursuing acting. It's kind of like mm, quitting drinking but still going to the bar every night and not drinking. It's like, ah, and all my friends were auditioning and they were doing shows and I just I couldn't. I had this full-time job that was really, really demanding. So I decided, eh, I've always wanted to go to Santa Barbara. Uh, in my journal when I was about 17 or 18, I wrote that I wanted to go to Santa Barbara and pursue my acting career. Well, I didn't realize they weren't close enough together that you could. Santa Barbara was like two hours north, so that really wasn't going to work. But so I started looking for jobs in Santa Barbara. And my bosses were out of town. My then boyfriend, now husband, was out of town. And I just started, you know, the as new as the internet was, I was looking for things. I was faxing and resumes. And I had a couple people say, yeah, your experience is great, but you don't live here. And we've had that happen. So no, nope, we're not going to hire you. And one guy called me immediately from my random fax. And he said, oh, hey, well, it's so great. You know, you're the first one to answer my ad. And I said, I don't, what are you talking about? I said, I just randomly emailed you or randomly faxed you. And he goes, oh my God, we put an ad in today. We're hiring an associate producer. I went, oh my God. Talked to the guy for like an hour, went up that weekend, met him. He hired me on the spot for about 10 grand more a year than I had asked for. And I started two weeks later. And I moved from LA. My boyfriend moved from LA. We sold everything. I quit my job, much to the dismay of the people who I, you know, who I was working for. And started working for this guy here in Santa Barbara, and it was a nightmare. He was crazy. He was absolutely nuts. And what I found out that I didn't realize is he had about 10 other people in this position over the last two years. And I found myself completely unemployed, completely dejected. I felt like a total failure. I was humiliated. I was shamed. And that's when I realized, okay, I need to get back into massage. So I started studying more, and I opened my massage practice. And it's so fascinating because I thought that was such a failure, and I realized it led me to something amazing, and that's what I was supposed to be doing. I wasn't meant to stay in L.A. I would not have moved to Santa Barbara without a job. But if that job worked out, it was perfect. It would have been fabulous. I never would have left. So I realized in looking back at that, quote, failure, and I actually don't believe in failure, um, and I know this is a long story. I'm sorry to keep <laughs> going on, but, but, it's, but it's just such an illustration to me of everything works out how it's supposed to. And we're put in that place where we're supposed to be, and that's what that ended up being. But at that moment, I felt so dejected and so depressed and so lost. And, I, you know, no one likes feeling that way. I'm a Capricorn. I'm really bad at that. Um, mm -hmm. So it was it was a really interesting experience. But to look back, I realized, you know, for as long as I couldn't stand this man and just hated what he did to me, it's exactly what was supposed to happen. And he allowed me to do something bigger and better with that I was supposed to be doing. Wow, it's it's interesting. You brought in the uh, the, the zodiac thing, which is, I'm a huge huge proponent of. But that's another conversation for another day. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> People look at me like I'm crazy, but that's okay. That's okay. I, I'm with you. <laughs> What was your most challenging client-related situation, and how did you resolve it? <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, this is gross. I hope no one's eating lunch. Um, so as a <laughs> massage therapist, uh, you know, the human body, you know, I got to touch that. Um, I had a woman who spent, and I had seen her before. She was an, a longtime client of mine, but she got into this habit of exposing herself to me. So she'd say, this is where my thigh hurts. And she'd whip the sheet back and open her legs. And I'm like, whoa, no, 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 time out. Don't need to see that. That's no, no. Um, wow. So three massages in a row, she did this. And I'm like, okay, if a guy was doing this to me, this would be unacceptable. So just because she's an old woman, this is not okay. So I was just, I'm like, okay, if she does this again, this, she's out. I'm not, you know, and she didn't. And I was like, yay. So I'm out in the front room and I'm waiting for her to get changed. And I hear this weird sound and I'm like, oh, that can't be, no, that, what is, yep. Yeah. She opens the door a couple minutes later, and she looks at me and completely deadpan says, I just peed in your trash can. What? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Imagine my surprise. And I went, what, 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 why would you do that? Like, what, what, I, I, you know I have a bathroom. She goes, yeah, I wasn't going to make it. And I'm like, I, I totally, I, it's, it's hard to make me have a loss for words. And we stood there and just looked at each other for the longest time, and she finally said, oh, well, I'm going to clean it up. And I went, uh, yeah, you are. And so she takes my trash can and she leaves my office and she goes, we have a, a, you know, sort of mutual bathroom in the hallway. And she walks out. I text my husband and I'm like, uh, client just peed in my trash can. He's like, that's queer. I'm like, it, it really seems to be. So she walks back in and I said, well, I'm trying to be nice to this woman. I was still in shock. I said, thank you for telling me. 
because that would have been stunning in about an hour when I went back into my office and realized someone peed my trash can. She looks at me very seriously and says, well, who would do something like that and not tell you? <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm thinking you could have put the period after who would do something like that. Right. And so the next time she shows up, I'm thinking, holy crap, she's going to be in my trash can again. The woman brought Tupperware with her. And at the end of her massage, I leave the room and I hear her clearly peeing into a Tupperware container. She walks out with her Tupperware and I went, look, you can't do that in here. I said, that's a health violation. I said, I have people taking off their clothes in that room. You cannot do that. You cannot come into my office. And she's like, I don't understand why. She was just clueless. So I don't know if she was losing her mind, um, but I finally explained to her in no uncertain terms, she was not allowed to urinate in my office, in her Tupperware or my trash can. And uh, she, she didn't come back. She didn't come back. <laughs> That's, that seems like one of those opportunities where you put up a sign inside your office that says, no urinating inside of the rooms. Well, and my clients had a field day with this because occasionally on Facebook I'll post client quote of the day. And this one was client quote of my lifetime. I just peed in your trash can. So I'll, you know, one guy wrote, wrote in and said, well, thank God it wasn't rattan, which I thought was very funny. He said, someone wrote, do you think she has a problem? I'm like, I think that's self-explanatory. Yes. But, it, you know, my clients said one had put a post-it note on my trash can with a it said P with the no sign through it, like no spoken. It was hysterical. But yeah, she didn't come back. Um, so I don't know that that was a client challenge so much as just a really crazy experience that I love telling people about because they think it's all sunshine and roses. It's like, you're a healer. It's like, yeah, there are times that's not not quite as happy as you think it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, what do you feel was one of the hardest things for you to overcome in your business that you've since conquered? Mm. Uh how do I, what I don't, there's not one good word for it. Um, that, that fear of growing, um, you know, when I started massage, I did out calls only. And so that move to have my own office where I was going to have to, um, pay rent was really scary to me. Am I going to have enough clients for that? Am I going to, so it was those growing pains. Uh, the other thing now that I wish I would have done, I wish I would have kept better notes. Like as clients came and went, I never got people's email addresses because at that point email was so new. And now I kind of wish I had everybody's email address, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, as far as the speaking, I think it's it's the impatience. I'm very impatient. It's that, again, that Capricorn thing. Uh, and I'm like a triple Capricorn, so <laughs> uh, patience is definitely, definitely not my strong suit. You know, I want it now. I want to contact someone now and be booked to speak right then. And that's not how it works. You know, I'm talking to people now about things for 2019. Um, you know, so it's it's a process of, of planting those seeds, watering them, nurturing them and then waiting. And I'm not a good waiter. Um, and I'm, I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better at it. But it's, what did my husband say? The, the tyranny of the urgent, um, that everything, you know, has to be done right now. And it doesn't. And I'm learning to relax into that a little bit more. So that's, that's my biggest challenge is just waiting. What one thing in your business are you currently struggling to overcome? Waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still struggling. No, it's still, it really is my biggest challenge is that impatience, is that impatience and the follow through. Um, that's really hard because I have so many things going on that, you know, I'll do a mass mailing or uh, so I connected with a bunch of really important people on LinkedIn and I did my first initial contact and went, ah, yeah, and then moved on to the next thing. And I realized, no, 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 this is a process. And you now have to go back and follow up with those people. They're not going to hire you the first time out. You have to establish that relationship. And I'm really good with that in person. Uh, I can talk to anybody at a party. I can, you know, I'm really good at promoting myself if I'm one-on-one -on -one with you and we're having a great conversation. But to do that online or through LinkedIn, I'm not good at that yet for some reason. That aspect of my, quote, sales um, hasn't gelled. So I'm working on that. That's a challenge for me. What do you feel is your one biggest business triumph to date? Oh, I think having such a successful practice so fast. I rose to probably one of the busiest massage therapists in Santa Barbara. I had set a five-year goal to have certain numbers and certain dollar signs and all this stuff, and I met it in less than three. Um, so that was pretty impressive. I'm also, you know, I've got seven books, which I never thought I'd have one book, and they sell pretty darn well. You know, I'm not a bestseller or anything like that, but I'm really proud of all of the tools that I've been able to assemble to give to other people to help them, whether it's the speaking or the recordings of podcasts like this or the books and the one-on-one -on -one and the consulting and the coaching. I'm, I'm really proud of that. And that, that's been a huge thing for me. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, the uh, self-help category is still the biggest category, the most popular category too. 
Yeah. Well, and we need that, you know, and there's always, yeah, we do. It's not like there's much new, but there's a different spin and there's a different generation of speakers and a different generation of people sharing that knowledge. And I think that's so important to keep that cycle going. What do you feel is your one biggest personal triumph today? Oh, well, this kind of goes with that, but getting my PhD was huge. Um, I'm married. I've been with my husband for almost 20 years. That's gigantic because I don't know how any relationship works. <laughs> They're all so crazy, uh, but that's been gigantic. You might need to write a book on that. Oh, boy. That would be a long one. <laughs> that's unfolding. That's that's a, you know, tune in every day and check in on that. And you know, we've had our ups and downs, and I think going through that triumph, we were together for well over eight years before we got married and we hadn't planned on getting married. And, you know, a lot of family members were like, Oh, I don't know. Uh, But we said, look, we're committed to each other without that piece of paper. We're committed to each other without, we have a better stay together for the kids thing. We made a choice. Um, and then we ended up getting married for, you know, tax more for tax purposes and and have a big party than because we felt like we had to. But yeah, it's, it's, it's been a personal triumph to, to be with someone that long and, and make it work. Hang tight, successors. We'll return to our conversation with Kathy Groover as well as quick success after a word from our sponsors. Podcasters, want more listeners? Check out promosharecast.com and join the community today. That's promosharecast.com. Join today and get the first month free, and you'll also receive 50% off for a lifetime membership. Sign up today, promosharecast.com. Are you a tense, tired, busy person who works day in and day out who tends to lack the proper sleep and energy? Using modular supplements, health-related articles, recipes, life hacks, and more, Bellison can help. With quality as high as Bellison, you're buying from a company that cares about the environment and only uses premium vegan supplements. That's Bellison.com. Want to learn how to cook healthy, exercise, and meditate in just 30 minutes a day? Bellison.com. Want to feel healthy, energetic, and focused like me? Bellison.com. To receive a 10% discount at checkout... Whoa, hold on. Now, receive even more health benefits with a 20% discount at checkout. Go to Bellison.com with the coupon code, the 4POS, to get your 20% off now. Visit Bellison.com. That's B-E-L-I-S-A-N.com. Compassion and quality without compromise. Bellison.com. Are you tired of trying every new diet fad? Sick of the pills, shakes, and vibrating belts? Are you just sick and tired of being sick and tired? Linda Lavender knows exactly how you feel. That's why she created Eat to Live to Love. Eat to Live to Love is a personalized mentoring program 100% unique to you. With 24-7 support, learn to shop smart, save money, eat clean, and find your purpose using the tools and resources you need to achieve real weight loss and transformative healing without ever having to buy another gimmicky fat-sucking wrap or magic protein shake. Eat to Live to Love has been the driving force behind people across the United States to not only change their lives, but to actually take back control. Find out how health coach Linda Lavender can help you become your own hero and transform your life at eattolivetolove.com or call 1-888-440-9795 for a free initial consultation. Stop just dreaming about success and make it happen with Eat to Live to Love. Visit eattolivetolove.com now. That's eat, the number two, live, the number two, love.com. Eat to Live to Love, healing, weight loss, and fitness. And we're back with author and speaker Kathy Groover, Ph.D., Now we get into the part of the show I like to call Quick Success, where you, Kathy, can inspire the successors to enhance their lives in the areas of knowledge, health, wealth, and spirituality. Kathy, what are you currently doing to enhance your knowledge? I am in a medical hypnosis course because I know my practice in that area is going to grow, and I love doing the medical aspect of it. What are you currently doing to enhance your health? I am uh, watching my diet a little bit better. was getting a little crazy with the wine at night. Uh, I'm married to a wine writer, so that sort of goes with it. Uh, And I'm dancing more. I just add another dance class to my week. What are you currently doing to enhance your wealth? Mm. Uh, I am consolidating credit cards. Uh, I was a bad girl. And I'm putting a little more money in my IRA this year. What are you currently doing to enhance your spirituality? Meditating every day. Are there any modern technologies or apps that help you achieve success? 
Yeah. You know, I just started working with something called Muse, which is this headset that actually helps you chart your meditation. And without it, I can meditate pretty okay. <laughs> I've learned to do that over the years. Uh, but it really helps because it actually shows your brain waves. So it helps train you to stay in that calm state. It's a pretty cool technology. What new thing, book, activity, technology, or skill are you really excited to learn and dive into? Oh, I would love to try rock climbing. Not that I need one more thing to do with my hands between the massage and the trapeze. Uh, But yeah, that's something that I'd like to try. And successors, Kathy has an offer for you. Kathy, what is that? Yeah, if you go to my website, thealternativemedicinecabinet.com, and buy any of my books or any combination of my books and enter the uh, the code Head Start to get a discount. All right, successors, you heard that. That's thealternativemedicinecabinet.com, and the promo code is Head Start. Kathy, how can our listeners connect with you? Yeah, the best thing is the website we just gave, which is thealternativemedicinecabinet.com. Uh, and if you want to talk to me about doing some speaking, some workshops, coaching, that is kathygroover.com. And I'm all over social media. I'm on LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And so connect with me there. I love hearing from people and helping them and sharing things. So yeah, let me know how I can help. That's, that's what I'm here for. Finally, Kathy, what's your definition of success? Mm, living a life on your terms, uh, being able to do what you want to do when you want to, and bringing people along with you for that ride. Successors, I hope you've enjoyed my conversation with Kathy Groover. Please check out more successful free content like this at the4pos.com, as well as rate, review, and subscribe wherever you find podcasts. Thanks for listening and prepare for success. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks for having me. If you want to do more, earn more, be more, and stay more motivated, visit Amazon.com right now for a copy of Indulge Your Affirmative Motivation Within, 25 Motivations of Personal Development and Life Success. Get it now at Amazon.com. Podcasters, want more listeners? Check out Promosharecast.com and join the community today. That's Promosharecast.com. Join today and get the first month free, and you'll also receive 50% off for a lifetime membership. Sign up today, promosharecast.com.